I feel like the last time we talked SCP was pre-containment, and not the containment of SCP creatures, but our containment. Sheesh, feels like a lifetime ago, doesn't it? Well, if we're trapped inside, the SCPs can't get us, right? Unless they're the ones that are actively seeking people out in their homes. I suppose that's not too far-fetched. Well, I think only one out of five today will do something like that, so your odds are pretty good. Hello, horror heads, and welcome back to the scariest channel on YouTube, Top 5 Scary Videos. I'm your horror host, Keegan Hughes, and today we're going to be counting down the Top 5 Scary SCP Monsters That Can Never Escape, Part 16. That's right. Before we get started, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe for more outrageous anomalies. Wicked. Let's begin. Kicking us off at number 5, we've got SCP-309. If you thought stuffed animals were creepy before, just wait until you get a look at this. It'll make your skin crawl. Or do something much worse. Much, much worse. 309 is a small, plush, stuffed animal that looks like it's been turned inside out. Seams and stitches on full display. The cuddly toy is understuffed, making it very flexible and floppy. It doesn't do too much other than sit there. It just appears to be a normal, if not externally confused, children's toy. It has no effect on inanimate objects, but contact with living subjects is highly dangerous, if not life-threatening. Yeah, this cozy, squishy guy should be absolutely under no circumstances be cuddled and or squoze. If a human or animal lightly brush the toy with a finger or other small digit, they will feel extremely uncomfortable for about 10 minutes. Subjects have reported extreme nausea, although vomiting is never induced. The unpleasant feelings are so extreme that most have not been able to maintain voluntary contact for more than a few seconds. But that is just the shallow end of this horrific swimming pool. If 309 is pressed firmly up against someone, or a subject tries to pick it up and hold it, that individual will be violently and painfully turned inside out. You can be just like Bun Bun here. Twins! The skeleton will remain unaltered, but all these soft tissues that should be beneath the lovely protective layer of skin will be resituated to the exterior of the body. One of the best part? Or the worst? It's not immediately fatal. Just really, really painful. Oh, and also it's irreversible. So if you do survive, good luck living in a bubble with all of your tendons exposed. Coming in at number four, we've got SCP-1123. Speaking of body parts that should remain under a layer of skin, let's discuss a cursed skull. 1123 is a human skull missing the lower mandible and all of its teeth. On the forehead is a message written in human blood. This message translates to remember. If you're further than five meters away from the skull or are looking at it through a photo, this message will not be visible. As you get closer though, it appears to be more legible and fresher until it looks wet. Around one meter, you'll start to notice other anomalous sensory phenomena like the smells of cooking or ashes, sounds like soft crying or distant footsteps, and even tactile responses like grit in your eyes or glass splinters in the sole of your foot. None too pleasant. Upon touching the skull, subjects will enter a dissociative fugue state that lasts anywhere between 90 minutes to 6 hours. During this time, they'll experience confusion, disorientation, and an adoption of a new identity and memories. Knowledge and language previously unknown to the subject will be acquired and they'll often either have a state of total catatonia or end up attacking someone nearby. Once the state ends, the subject will return to their previous state with memories of the knowledge they gained. Some say it's as if they lived a whole other life as someone else. These imprinted personalities share a lot of similarities, like being a victim of subjugation, torture, or imprisonment, dying by violence, and their death being a result of targeting by a political mass movement. Some examples of past personalities are that of an Armenian farmer who was burned alive by the Ottoman army, a Ukrainian girl beaten to death by members of the Soviet brigade, and an Iraqi victim of a mustard gas attack. As such, people who have touched the skull often share psychological effects common to the type of trauma experienced by the imprinted personality, like grief, survivor's guilt, and depression. No other anomalous effects have been reported, though. Swooping in at number 3, we've got SCP-3001. While not exactly a monster, the effects of this SCP are quite monstrous indeed. It's a b to explain, too. 3001 is a hypothesized paradoxical parallel slash pocketed non-dimension accessible through the creation of a momentary class C broken entry wormhole. <sighs> It's believed to be infinitely expanding and almost completely devoid of matter. A low Hume level causes the matter inside to decay extremely slowly, with simulations suggesting over 70% of an organism can disappear before function is impeded. I'd rather keep 70% of myself, but hey, if it keeps me alive. Way back when, Dr. Robert Scranton and his wife, Dr. Anna Lang, were testing some reality-bending technology, resulting in Scranton being transported into 3001. He was presumed dead for a while until he managed to get a panel chronicling his experiences transported back to the Foundation. 
this is how most information about 3001 was discovered. Apparently, he's been surviving in 3001 for over five years, with his mental and physical state constantly deteriorating. Now, the SCP itself is quite scary, seeing as nobody wants to be transported into a pocket dimension where nothing makes sense, there's no chance of escape. But even scarier are the theories that postulate that 3001 is the origin of the ever-prevalent SCP-106. The black corrosive gel filling all sorts of spaces in Scranton's log lent legitimacy to this idea. Imagine if other folks gained access to 3001 and became a creature like 106 and then started requiring femur-breaking sacrifices. One terrifying old man is enough, don't you think? Floating in at number two, we've got SCP-5031. This is a perfect example of why you should always try to treat things with compassion, even if they are dangerous. If researcher Huxtable didn't attempt to make a connection with this SCP, it may well have sliced and diced people to its heart's content. Or maybe it was super risky to attempt connection at all. Who knows? Back to the SCP itself, 5031 is a humanoid of unknown origin. It was originally believed to be non-sapient, but this theory was soon disproven. However, the idea that it will temporarily cease to exist when viewed, that one stayed true. Photos and video don't capture it either, but traces of its existence like blood trails or scratch marks will remain even when it disappears. Viewing its shadow doesn't cause it to cease existing either, and its appearance has been deduced through viewing it this way. 5031 has a small head, no discernible neck, and arms that branch out into three limbs at each elbow. It levitates about half a meter off the ground and has a blade-like lower edge. Although it has no nutritional needs, 5031 will hunt and consume any organism it encounters. This all changed though when senior researcher Stanley Huxtable came onto the scene. He saw the containment procedures as cruel and unusual and decided to figure out a way to have 5031 live a less stressful life. Through conducting experiments, he discovered that music and play reduced stress levels. Eventually, he also found out that 5031 liked rotisserie chicken and was able to differentiate between images, making correlations between those images and rewards. Over time, it even learned language and made requests for certain types of food. It even became adept at cooking and verbalized needs for other ingredients. Good for it. While this is a happier ending than most containment procedures, imagine what might happen if it went free and was unable to get the compassionate treatment it received from Huxtable. It very well might just go back to its slicing and dicing ways with any creature it comes across. And finally at number one, SCP-4910. Teeth are terrifying, you can't tell me otherwise. Any movie that presents the audience with the destruction of teeth or the use of teeth for something other than the mastication of food will send chills through my entire body. So 4910 is a tough one for me to imagine. It is known as a predatory dental quadruped and has been seen over 100 times across continents. The precise details are unknown, mostly thanks to witnesses rapidly succumbing to the effects of 4910 attacks, usually resulting in the rapid overproduction of teeth leading to the inability to verbalize. A mouth so full of teeth you can't speak. Oh no. Recording devices left to capture images will develop dented in key components and as a result no longer work. Researchers have tried to get victims to draw the beast, but artistic representations are all over the place. However, they all focus on various amalgamations of teeth and gums. Gross. 4910 is capable of differentiating between regular civilians and people who seek to capture it. Civilians are used primarily for food, while adversaries are made into vessels for reproduction of anomalous properties. So if you're trying to get rid of 4910, you may well become part of it in a really gross way. All attempts at capture to date have failed. 13 mobile task agents are missing in action, with 7 needing to be euthanized and 5 falling to auto-transformative cannibalism. So little is actually known about this SCP, the imagination really takes the cake here. No. And there you have it, 5 fascinating fearsome SCPs. What'd you think of the list? What's your favorite from the group? Are there any I haven't talked about yet that I need to talk about? Make sure you let me know down in the comments. Speaking of comments, let's take a look at some of your more dogged ones from the top five scary hauntings throughout history. Oliver James says this was very interesting. I'm glad you think so. Demonique742 says my favorite ancient ghost story is about a man in ancient Greece being haunted. They cremated their dead and his wife had passed. However, the funeral pyre wasn't properly seen to and one of her shoes didn't completely burn, thus not traveling with her to the afterlife. So she came back and haunted her husband because her foot was cold until he properly burnt the shoe. That's incredible. I'd probably come back for something just as petty as that. Love it. Net Mystique says, I enjoy hearing stories from ancient times. They really bring me back to my youth. Your youth? How old are you? Tell me your secrets. October Ward says, potatoes, potatoes, potatoes. Also, what's up? I'm curious as to what edits you had to make to this comment. What possible correction could you have been trying to make? And Donna Shimming says, hey Keegan, how about giving us some Canadian ghost stories? Or a Canadian so nice there aren't any ghosts. Hope your foot is better. 
See, I would tell some Canadian ghost stories, but then I'd be taking some book sales from the authors who largely sell their books at the trading posts up north, and I don't know if I could live with myself after that. But it's doing well though. And that's all the time we have for today. Before I inspect the bear trap by getting really close to it, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe for more unholy happenstance. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. If a human and or animal, you can just be beep, 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 beep. If you're further than five meters away from the skull, oh, I don't even think I wrote in what the message meant. Non-dimension accessible through the creation of a momentary God damn it, God. Passionate treatment of Why is that line so very hard for me? So four nine ten so four nine ten beep, 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 beep. and one of her shows shoes. I'm about to sneeze too. <coughs> 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 <coughs>